put the budget after it was presented. Uh, but we are trying to set agenda. We're hoping to set agenda. We're hoping to uh, force some changes before it's presented. Uh, and this is presented, this uh, paper today is presented to show Malaysians that there is a need for, for the Prime Minister to curb his own spending. In particular, what I call, or what we call the slush funds. Now, if you follow the H this week, uh, this week there is a, there is a, what they call, uh, the theme for this week is Budget 2017, Populist of Prudent. The H talks about, uh, maybe you can <laughs> show you. <laughs> no one from the H, is it? <laughs> okay. Basically, the issue has this discussion. Is there a need for the government to increase taxes? Okay. Is there a need for the government to increase taxes? And also, coincidentally, Chan Suen from uh, uh, Chua from the, the age talk about similar things that, uh, that we research on. Budgeting is about making choices and setting priority. Budget 2017, which will be presented on 21st of October, is set against an increasingly difficult and slowing global economy that inevitably means less corporate taxes for the government and oil prices have plunged since October 2014. Domestic consumption has been depressed since the introduction of GST. Eating into the disposable income of ordinary Malaysians. That means ordinary Malaysians could have more money to spend, but because of GST, they have to spend less, uh, and, and the remaining... ...which further depress domestic consumption. It is by now clear that the government is collecting less personal tax and also corporate taxes, as well as GST. I mean, it has been shown in uh, various documents that GST, as well as will be less than expected. And that is the crisis that the government is, has, has to grapple with. In short, there is a shortfall in revenue and a need to make difficult choices. We have seen in news report, uh, there is talk that the budget for the health ministry will be, will be slashed uh, by 300 million and there will be other slashes in, uh, in small sum of
virtually by a stroke of pen of the Prime Minister with very little scrutiny. It is a gross abuse of budget processes to have such items and we call for immediate abolishment of such items. Now, we touch on the Prime Minister Department spending and it, please note that the Prime Minister Department spending doubled during Najib's time. Yeah. And before Najib became Prime Minister, the last budget of Abdullah Badawi was 10 billion ringgit. Uh, the previous budget of Najib was 20 billion ringgit. And in my research, uh, in our research, unlike, I mean, the H research actually included a location to uh, JPA, Attorney General's uh, Chamber, and uh, what was the other one? MACC. But in our research, we have excluded MACC, AG Chamber, and uh, JPA. So we are only focusing on the Prime Minister's office, and even that, the Prime Minister's office has doubled its allocation in the last 10 years, uh, in, 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 in under the watch of Najib. Prime Minister departments in Malaysia is now a super ministry with nine ministers, three deputy ministers, and 51 divisions. Our studies, uh, as I said, does not include the three departments, unlike the age. Uh, if you look at the, the, the age uh, figure, it's much bigger than, than uh, what we have shown. And to show a fair picture, in, we use inflation adjusted figures. So we adjusted the inflation uh, price to show what actually happened and to show the situation compared to the years, uh, the previous years. So 2015 prices were used. The figure of 2015 and 2016 are estimates. And to be fair, the Prime Minister Department is already quite big under Tun Mahathir's time, uh, if you compare it with most other countries. But Najib made the presidential Prime Ministership largest ever in Malaysian history. The Prime Ministerial Edify is now a threat competing for scare resources with public education, public health and welfare. The size of total budget has doubled between 2000 and 2016. But the size of Prime Minister Department has increased by four folds in, in the years under Najib. That means between, or increased by four folds between 2000 and 2016. And the sharpest increase happened under the watch of Najib. Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi's final year in office, 2008, provided 7 billion for Prime Minister Department. It spiked to 10 billion in 2009 when in Najib's first year, and 20 billion in 2016. In other words, a figure double under Najib's watch. The Prime Minister de Department allocate, allocation were less than 4% of the total budget between 2002 and 2008. Najib's first year as Prime Minister saw the Department taking 4.9% of total budget for the year, and between 2010 and 2015, the Department took between 5 to 7%, 5 and 7% of total allocation, and in 2016 budget, the budget the Prime Minister Department took 7.6% of the total budget. Development allocation is also huge. The Prime Minister Department has a huge development budget under Najib against the backdrop of overall shrinking development allocation. There are two sets of allocation in the budget. One set is called operating budget. The other set is called development budget. The, the, Proportion of development budget has been very, very small in the last few years. In, last, in the last budget, 2016 budget, only 19% of the budget comes from, uh, is, is for development. Out of 267 billion budgeted for 2016, only 19% for development. However, in that small amount, Prime Minister Department took to 27%. That means a quarter of the budget allocated for development was placed under the Prime Minister Department and not for schools, not for hospital, not for anything that is for ordinary people. It went to Prime Minister Department. And the bulk of it, bulk of it went to something we call the Slush Fund, which is under the titles of Program Pembangunan, Program Penyelarasan, Program, Program Pembasmian Kemiskinan, Project Project Kecil, Project Khas, Project Mesra Rakyat, and Dana Facilitasi. These are funds that the Prime Minister has discretional power 
He has full power to use it and no one actually uh, accounts for how the usage. So we have shown in the, all this chart uh, the amount of money that, that is here. And you can see that before 2010, it was virtually non-existent. These are all developed under Najib. Before Najib, there was no such thing. Or even if there was something like that, it was very little. For instance, in 2007, only 1 million ringgit for Penyu Sunan Semula Masyarakat. And there was no other items. So these items only developed over the last 4-5 or five years. And we call for its abolishment. I think it's time for us to keep curb all this spending. And it's time for the Najib to respond to our call. Our call is an important one. We want to see that this budget give more money to education, give more money to healthcare, give more money to welfare in time of crisis. Thank you.